For me, Pass Future Story is about individuals, communities, and people who have come together and realized that the nation that they come from, the nation that they had left behind for many different reasons, is a nation uh, which needs their help, but also which is calling for it, because there's so much uh, windows, doors open for them to go to. So, just look at it, look at it, look at it. It's not. <laughs> and it's like deep in there. It's really it's beautiful. I want a country with a developed infrastructure, with a peaceful country. I want a country uh, whereby, you know, it's, it's easier to do business in. And so, on my return here, as I speak to people young and old, and as I see what's taking place, I've chosen to look at the things that are um, productive. I could easily have looked at the things that are still in, in, in have with room to improve. I can look at all the things that are not yet where they need to be. I can do that. But what is that going to do? What is, how is that going to serve me or the country or or the community that I come from. You know, I'm young, so I have a lot of dreams about how to transform my country architecture-wise, whereby the, the Rwanda is an, a developing country. And so I'm looking at the individuals and the people with stories that are successful, the, 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 the communities that are successful, uh, projects that are successful. It is with that reason that I have decided to do a documentary because as you know, I have just finished doing a walk uh, from Toronto to Montreal to raise awareness to PTSD, challenges of um, mental health caused by the Rwandan genocide against Tutsis in 1994. Um, as I got to Rwanda, I realized that that process, they have already begun. And it is why I have decided to do a documentary to show the people of, of Canada and other places in diaspora what Rwanda has done so far. And so when I talk about past, future, I'm talking about the places where we're coming from and the places where we're going. Because there is no reason to dwell on the present. What we do today is the future. So if you sit down and do nothing, if you wait for the right moment, if you wait for the right time, if you are waiting for that particular thing, that thing will never come. <laughs> Also, I should say to those who maybe have taken long to come back to Rwanda, I am encouraging them to really come back and see what's happening, see where we were in, in those years of uh, genocide and where we are now, see such, such a big difference. A lot of stuff have happened and um, they can't believe, they can't believe that this is Rwanda they used to see in the 90s. Kino cha mbere gishimishije ni ukubona iterambere ry'ingano nyuma y'imyaka 22 genocide ibaye hari cyo bigaragaza 
kigaragaza iterambere igihugu kimaze kugera eh ubundi kuza turi benshi bikongera murari na courage kugira ngo wenda ejo azaza uzaje ubyire nabandi ati ngo yewe kwa rufunge rw'abantu batrukana bati ahandi batruka za za burayi twituka muri amerika abandi batruka za uganda abandi baturuka hi we mba mu rwanda usibye ko nagiye kwiga mu ugande na ubundi mba mu rwanda ngweraho twatangiriye tujya gusuringana no rwanda na ngiye gusuringana ama diaspora hose n'ubwo bitandukanye so twaganiriye gera tuti ya hano mu gitondo nishimye byo twabonye twasuye Jamfungu yibugongo, bituma shaka kutichele za kuresha nengu umonuru mjuko. Ari Uganda, ari nshuti kwa gani liye, yitiche za gisha, ari ya mahao tufuye, kurari ya mateka ya tukivu kisa gana none. Kujo itubonu bungubu, ahobu ya tanjiriye, ya tunyagi mdoba nuchi za ilekandi bituma Anje umuje na shikari zana wande baje na ku kujiri vite chile sabjuwa kitu. So if you sit down and do nothing, if you wait for the right moment, if you wait for the right time, if you are waiting for that particular thing, that thing will never come. And it's with that that I'm doing these stories, telling Rwandan stories, talking to young and old people with aspirations, people with dreams, people who see can foresee uh, the visions of Rwanda uh, looking at 2020, 2050 and even beyond. And so I um, got to a place in my life where uh, today doesn't mean much anymore. Uh, the things that I do means that I have to look at my life beyond this day, beyond tomorrow, beyond next year beyond 10 or 20 years from now. I'm looking at 200 years from now. And so I've looked at that and I've come back here and run and realized that that's what's taking place. That everybody's looking and everybody's realizing that it's not just for us that we're building. We're building for the future generation. And so for the youth, for the people our age and people younger. This is what attracts us, which is funny because this should also attract the old. But we are attracted by the fact that we are now building for the future generations, that we don't have to wait anymore. We can do that today and know that we have lived, we've left a mark for our children to continue. And being able to have that understanding, that realization, allows you to do things that many other people would not see or would think is crazy. So for me, doing a walk from Toronto to Montreal, I might look crazy to some people. That's because I don't look at today as today anymore. What I do today determines what I become tomorrow for me and for the community. And this is the same stories for everybody I speak to. And I'm reminded of the story of the people that liberated Rwanda and what they had to go through, of course, the visit that we went to. And you can see, for them, that was never about them. I mean, it's with any nation, like if you send a soldier to the war, they know that they have a better chance of dying than returning home. It's with that spirit, you understand, that the people that came before you, that laid almost a red carpet for you. Because now life is easy. Yes, you're going to find those things that other people are looking at. You're going to find all the things that are missing. But you're going to go through that. I'm not going to do that. I choose not to do that because I feel like I'm better served by looking at what's working. Because it's with connecting what's working that allows you to get somewhere. It is with connecting what's working that gets you somewhere and then you can work with everybody that is doing the right things, that is working to build. And before you know it, you have the things that you have here in Rwanda today. Before you know it, 2020 will come and some people will still be looking at the wrong things. 2050 will come and people will still be looking, like they will still be looking at the wrong things. But my goal, my hope is to reach the young people who are looking for this thing, the building. So when we spend time doing, we're doing things that are not just good for us, for the people who are going to come after we go home, once we have done our work. Because that's what the past generations failed to do. And that is why the nation, especially here in Rwanda where I am, that's why things had to change. And so the result of genocide was a result of a failure in seeing the future. 
community of people coming together. And now what we see now is a result of understanding that is not just for you when you're building, you're building for the people who are yet to be even thought of in terms of existing. And so that's why I'm telling these stories and that's why I'm doing the documentary uh, to be able to show what the Rwandan community have already begun, which is working together, building a nation that people are gonna have to wonder how did these people do it? Because that's, that's the, 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 the thought you have when you look at other nations in Africa or other nations that never really went through what Rwanda went through, but yet are struggling to come from under um, as obviously as Rwanda is doing now. So, you know, looking at the industries as I go, different uh, areas that we're visiting, um, just understanding that everybody now is thinking, let's do Made in Rwanda, the same spirit that the Americans had when they began building in America or the Europeans had with their renaissances. This is what's taking place here. The idea that we can build here. Of course, we're gonna have, we have, gonna have to have alliances and learn from those things. That doesn't stop us from doing things that are unheard of in these areas of communities and areas of activities. And so that's, to me, that's music. And I know I'm not the only one. I know there is a generation that is hearing that and all they hear is, yes, yes. Of course, life is gonna be tough. Let me tell you, life is gonna be tough, but you're gonna make it tougher if you choose to accept the fact that it is tough. You're supposed to welcome those challenges. You're supposed to take them and understand that they're here to teach you something. Pick it up and learn from those lessons. Don't let life put you down. Make life your friend. And I think Rhonda has done that. And I'm working to do that. And I hope you can join me in doing that. Welcome to Rwanda. <laughs> biruta ibyo twatekerezaga gukora ni mureke rero dukomeze guharanira kugera kure hashoboka mu nzego zose atari muzareta gusa ahubwo ari no muzabikorera